Hey there, you chefs, welcome to this week's menu. So I'm just about to get cooking and take you through the 10 dishes uh, which we've done for you this week. Loads happening, lots of tasty treats coming up, so stay tuned and I'll just take you right through it now. Right, my weekly bake course this week is a seaweed focaccia. So unwrap your focaccia, which comes in this lovely little box. It's all in foil. Put it in the oven, in the foil of course, and it won't dry out. You want it in there for about 10 to 12 minutes or so. Then I've sent you with this lovely little seaweed salt here, modern salt, and then just carefully undo your little butter so it's inverted in that pot, take it off carefully, and what you've got there is this lovely whipped yuzu butter uh, rolled in seaweed around the outside. I'm going to let that come up to room temperature, really, really important, so you can really butter that bread nice and nice and uh, thick the other top. I'm going to take a little bit of my seaweed salt, I'm just going to season the top of the butter in readiness, and then I'm going to wait for my capture to come out, and then we'll be all ready to serve up. So, just uh, grabbing my catcher out of the oven now, watch out for that hot tray, and then we'll undo it from the foil, like so, now look at that lovely slab of seaweed for catcher all ready for you there, then what we're going to do, a little bit of rapeseed oil or olive oil, whichever your preference, and then take some of that seaweed salt, again, a little bit just on the top, there we go. We've already hold the brioche for you, so so you just you don't need to kind of like stab it like you would do when you when the catcher first comes out of the oven. And I'm just gonna cut it. Some nice wedges, like so. Present it up in my bowl. All ready to dive into. And then let's get our butter. Add that onto my dish. There we go. Lovely way to start the meal. I'm going to take this to the table now. All ready to dive. First dish on the menu this week is a confit of cod. So in here you've got a piece of cod. This has been salted, rinsed off, and then we've got a little confit fat just in there. That's going to go in the water. So I've just got a pan of water that's come up to scalding point. I'm going to take it off the heat completely. I'm going to drop my cod in. That's going to be in there about eight minutes or so. Then Spanish omelette. You see they're lovely layered up with all the potato, smoked paprika in there, a touch of sherry vinegar I like to add as well just to give it that lovely background flavour. That's going to go in the oven for about five, six minutes, no longer. And then my garnishes, lovely selection of roasted vegetables cut into a nice uh, fine dice. That's going to go on top of the cod when it comes out. And then this pill pill sauce. So this is made from the cod itself. It's got some garlic in there, it's got chilli, lemon, really, really nice, rich sauce, and then olive oil uh, blitzed into it. So we'll be back in about eight to 10 minutes, and I'm gonna show you how to plate the cod up. I'm just gonna get my cod out now. So take a little tweezers, something just to help you lift it out of the water. There you go, and then you want a J cloth, like I've got here, just on your tray. Very carefully cut open your little vacuum pouch and just gently let that cod come out of the bag, okay? So, out it comes. And then what we're gonna do, let it drain off nicely. And then I'm just gonna get some of my peppers, aubergine in here, probably a little sauce, and I'm gonna, gonna put some of that on the top. And the reason I'm doing this sort of off the plate is just because you'll get some that kind of falls off. So I want to be able to really get lots of that built up on there, like so. Then onto your plate, a little rinse out spoon. Take some of your pill pill, give it a little stir, first of all. Put a spoon of the pill pill on the plate. You can always serve more with it, of course, but it's quite strong. So take a little pallet knife, Shall just nicely spread that out on there, okay? Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of my salsa just to sit my cod on. And again, I've left the salsa to come up to room temperature again, so just so you don't heat it up or anything, but make sure it's not fridge cold. Let's grab out our Spanish on there. There we go. Lovely smell of that smoked paprika coming off of there. And then we'll lift that out. 
like so. Take it off the paper, put that just on the side. And then I'm gonna very carefully get my piece of cod, sit it on top of your little peppers, like so. Just give it a little arrange. And I'm just gonna finish off with a tiny bit, again, rapeseed or olive oil. Just on there like that. Look at that. Lovely, delicate dish there. That confit of cod, the salsa, the pill pill, and of course that Spanish on the, on the side. Hope you enjoy. Second starter for this week is this breast of guinea fowl. So you see here, we've poached the guinea fowl breast on the crown. This has got an English mustard glaze just on the top. Then we've got a little cremeski. So this is the braised confit guinea fowl leg. Um, pressed and then we've done it with little panko breadcrumbs. It's going to go in the oven for about four to five minutes, no longer. And then we've got to see here, these are sprouted grains. So in here we've got some chickpeas, we've got little lentils in there. So you see how they're all lovely and sprouted, those little germs coming out of them. And you've got some uh, mixed herbs in there. Take some of your dressing, this is a roasted guinea fowl dressing. A little bit in there, not too much. Give that a stir and this is just going to dress up all your lentils nicely. Tiny bit of seasoning as well. And then just make sure that's all really nicely mixed. And then also what we've got here are some little pickle radishes. So I'm going to take my guinea fowl out. Now this has been out at room temperature, just warming up. I'm going to put a tiny bit of oil on the top of there just for the presentation, just to make it all nice and shiny. Just going to run the finger just over the top so it's all beautifully glazed up. And then a tiny bit of salt, just those little grains on the top. Then what we're going to do, we've got a plate here. So let's take some of our grains. And you can plate these around, completely up to you. I'm going to put a little sort of base for my guinea fowl breast to sit on. And there we go, let's spread those out nicely. Like so. Then let's put our rest of the guinea fowl just sitting on the top. Then I'm going to take a few of these little sprouts and just add a few around. And we'll grab our cremeskis out shortly just to add. So a few more of those. So then let's get a little of our pickles here. So if you get those out onto your board so you can sort of see all of them. And then just start placing those around. So we've got some pink radish in here, white radish. So I'll just place those. And then let's get our cremeski out and we can add those. And we're gonna add a few more of those pieces on the top. So, most coming out the oven now. They've got that lovely little salty sort of like kick to them where, you, where they've been confit. So I'm just going to add three nice ones for that. Then I'm going to add a few more of my little pickled radishes just on the top. There we go. So keep going. Really make it look beautiful. That's enough for me at the moment. Now I'm going to get a little spoon, take a little bit more of your dressing, give it a stir, and just put some lovely little dots of that around. And this is the, the bones from the guinea fowl, which we've heavily roasted, made of stock, and then we've turned that into that lovely vinaigrette. So nothing wasted at all, maximum flavour. There we go. So, it's all ready to go. So that is the little breast of guinea fowl, English mustard glaze on the top, the comfy cremeskis there, and those lovely sprouted grains. Hope you enjoy it. Next starter, beetroot arancini. Here they are. Three lovely little balls of uh, decadent beetroot risotto in the center. So you've got uh, the beetroot risotto, cooked down beetroot juice, got crispy panko breadcrumbs on the outside. Mm -mm. Let's get them in the oven. Eight to ten minutes, that's all we're going to take. 
And then look at this, beetroot carpaccio. This is gonna be uh, on the plate to present with. Make sure that comes up to room temperature before you serve it. So it's golden beetroots, candy beetroots. We haven't got any red ones in there because if you put red ones, the whole thing turns red. So um, we've got whipped uh, green bar goat cheese. It's fantastic goat cheese from the Isle of Wight. Then I've got this nasturtium dressing in here. Take a little bowl whilst all that's going on in the oven. Take your delicate little nasturtium leaves out of your container and then just get some of that fennel salad into your bowl, that's enough for this one. Take a little spoon, get a little bit of that dressing, over it goes. Touch your seasoning, and then just, see I just stir that up a little bit, and then that's gonna be all good now. It's gonna wilt down slightly, all ready for when our risotto comes out, and I'll show you how to plate it up. So my risotto balls are nearly heated up now, so I'm just gonna take my carpaccio, so you just carefully cut that with the knife, open that up, and then you'll see inside it's got like a little sort of paper base to it, but, and then it's also got grease proof on both sides. So what you wanna do, just get a little knife, make sure you can take it off of the paper. And it's a little bit delicate, but there it comes, off it goes. And then make sure you've got the presentation size. So you see this, as I look at it, it's a presentation size. You can see the victory on the top, and turn it over, take that side off, you can just lose that for the time being, and then take my plate, and I'm just gonna invert it onto the top. You've got a little bit of movement just to make sure it's all nicely presented. And then just take a cloth, and just give it a little tidy up if you've got any of that beetroot juice which has just gone over the plate. There we go. A Little bit of dressing on the top, of that really nice beetroot carpaccio full of colour on the top of that like so a little bit of seasoning there we go and then in readiness let's get our goat's cheese let's cut the end off the little piping bag and then of course we've got our nasturtium leaves and we've got that lovely little uh, fennel salad which you can see now is wilted down where the, where the dressing has started to kind of really get in and wilt it so Let's get our risotto balls out. Arancini, here they come. Be careful with these because they're, of course, quite delicate. That risotto in the centre is lovely and, lovely and soft. A little bit of seasoning. And I'm going to put, like so. One, two, and last one, three. There we go. Then, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move it over to my board so I can get to it. I'm gonna get a little bit of my goat's cheese and I'm gonna pipe. You know, try not to be too sort of placed to this. So of course, uh, you've already got those three risotto balls sort of sitting in the center, so we want this to look a bit more natural as we go through. So look, three nice piles of goat's cheese. Then, take my pieces of fennel. Where these, we slice these into ice water. So it's still got this lovely little shape to them. You can just delicately arrange them in between. If you don't want so much that you can't see the beetroot, just enough. There we go, I'm happy with that. Finally, let's get some nasturtium leaves in there. We're almost ready to go. Little nasturtium, maybe just one more, just in that centre. There we go, beautiful. I'm on, almost ready now. Touch of dressing just to finish off. I think you'll agree, that's a lovely little delicate starter. There we go. Beetroot arancini, carpaccio, lovely whipped local green barn ghost cheese. Up next, we've got a bream on papillot for the main course. So take it very, very carefully out of your container. And what we've got here, we've got this lovely little parcel completely sealed in there as your fillet of bream, some lovely spring vegetables, we've got Gordau olives in there, a touch of fish stocks all going on. That's going to go in the oven for about eight, uh, sorry about 20 minutes in total. In that goes, so eight minutes of what I was going to say is the both bean potatoes. So this is a little potato, uh, mashed potato with shoe pastry, so shoe, shoe in there. They're going to go in the oven for about eight minutes so let's keep them so I'll bring halfway through. 
and really, really simple. The only other garnishes, we've got a Nolly Pratt sauce here, so a little fish velouté finish with Nolly Pratt, and we've got this beautiful jet green wild garlic oil, which is just gonna go over the top. So back in about 20 minutes, and I'll show you how to put the bream on papi up together. So I've got a hot plate here, all ready for my bream. My Nolly Pratt sauce is just warming up now. And let's get our dopey potatoes out and our bream on papi dots. Here it is. Be really careful of this when you open it up because you can get quite a lot of steam come out. So let's just put that papi onto our board. And then we'll do, I'm just going to use a pair of scissors. You see there, just pinch that foil through, cut around the foil, and you can just tear it out. But do be careful of that steam. Look at that. See how that beautiful in there. All that lovely bream, we've got asparagus. Instantly, you see that little star anise? That's what we cooked it with. Obviously, you don't want to eat that, but quite nice to present it up with. Let's just bring my sauce off. So then what I'm gonna do is take my bream fillet, get my little palette knife under there, and just lift that off. And then I'm gonna get the remaining vegetables on my plate. Got a lovely bit of cooking juices in there. So get all of those vegetables off. Make a little base. I'm usually gonna use a couple of those ones as well. And then got my sauce all ready. Let's get the dauphine potatoes. Let's add them all the way around. Then we will get our fish. We'll add our fish to the top. So that's gonna all sit on the top like so. There we go. Sauce. Just a little bit of that. All the way around. And then we'll get our lovely little oil. Just gonna drop at that, almost splitting the sauce out as I do it, so you can see the beautiful green dot going around. And that's it. Super simple, but uber tasty. Bream on papillot, dopey potatoes, and a nolly pratt sauce. Meat main course this week for you, chef, is this pork cassoulet. What we've done, we've opened up the pork belly and inside it there's a lovely cassoulet sort of stuffing. So you've got pork mince in there, you've got haricot beans, there's lovely little Isle of Wight dried tomatoes, smoked bacon. That's gonna go into the pan of water, about 10 minutes. Basically pull the water right to the side so you just want it scalding. I need to put a cover on it, leave it in there for 10 minutes and that's gonna heat it up all, all up right to temperature where you need to serve. Garnishes for it, we've got some squid, squid I hear you say, but obviously squid and pork belly goes absolutely fantastic. So a little crispy squid here, since it's very fine sort of like almost batter on the outside. That's gonna go in the oven for eight to 10 minutes. Um, and then also we've got this asparagus here, which is lovely Isle of asparagus, about five minutes in the oven, no longer. A little herb butter on the top of there. Garnishes, when the, uh, when the pork comes out, we're gonna roll the top of it in this little crumb, so in here there's crackling, there's sourdough uh, crust. There's a little bit of thyme in there as well, beautiful. Red wine pork sauce, and a white onion pu puree or sauce of beets if you want to be really chef in French. So, we're gonna be back in about 10 minutes and I'm gonna show you how to plate my extra special pork belly up. So, just about ready to plate up my pork there. So, that's my sauce of beets, all ready to go. Got my plate, all ready to go as well, and then, Warm your red wine sauce, and then it will be time to get our pork out. So I've got my little tweezers ready to go. Bring the pan over, and then very carefully, so we'll just get in there, lift out that pork. But be very careful, of course, because it will be super hot. So pork is all ready. Let's grab out our asparagus, so we've got everything to hand, and there's our crispy squid. Let's do the pork first of all. So you can either cut it open with a pair of scissors or to a knife. So slip that little vacuum pouch and slide that pork out. Look 
for that. Beautiful. Then what we want to do is just take a little pan knife, lift up that pork. And I'm just gonna carefully dip that in my little pork crumb. Like so, back onto my board. That's all nicely coated. Then you can save a bit of that crumb to serve with if you like. Then let's get our palette knife. Let's just carefully lift that onto our plate. See it's got that lovely little crust all the way around it. Quick tie up of our board. Then what we want to do, I'm going to go a bit of puree, first of all. That's my sauce to be, so nice, nice little spoon of that just at the top of the plate. Go to our asparagus now, give it a little turnover where it's been cooked in that butter. So some nice asparagus beers just on the side, like so. Then we'll get our squid. I like to just place a few pieces of this all the way around where you get some just sitting on your asparagus. A few just over the side. And a little bit of that tentacle going on. There we go. Next up, some of our little red wine sauce. Just kind of tiny little bit of that around, you don't need too much. And there you go. So that's my pork cassoulet, a little bit of a take on it. That crispy crumb coating of the crackling and sourdough, the squid, local asparagus and sauce piece. My uh, vegetarian main course this week is a capoletti. So here we go, little witch's hats. A capoletti of oyster mushroom, so that's inside, and the lovage pasta. This is why it's green on the outside, so lovage is like a little celery taste. Uh, also, got mushroom cigarettes to go with, so beautiful little mushroom cigarettes made of foie brick pastry and a little like almost uh, duck cellar mushrooms. They're going to go in the oven about six minutes. There we go. And then I've got my pan here, which I'm going to put my consomme of celery in. So let's just undo that. Pour our consomme into the pan and then it's up to you, you can either this little selection of white beans, butter beans here, celery, lovage, you can put that straight into your dish or you can heat it up with your consomme which I'm going to do. So I'm going to get that onto the heat. There we go, let's get that on. Not too hot, just spread it sort of nice medium heat ticking over. And I'll bring my pan over here and show you the capoletti. So let's get our capoletti into the pan with about two tablespoons of water uh, per portion of pasta. And then ideally, back on the heat, and let's get the cover on there. So the pasta's gonna start to heat through. And make sure as well you get all of the butter that it comes with in the pan. So it's not gonna take too long, the pasta is already cooked. So give it a little shake through cooking. Let's get our Consomme on the go. And then we've also got a lovage oil here, which we're gonna, be, we're gonna serve with it. So I'm gonna keep an eye on my uh, little capoletti now as they heat, about uh, two minutes or so, we'll be back and I'll show you how to present this up. Okay, capoletti, almost ready to go. So let's bring over my little consomme. You see that, beautifully clear. And that's got all my beans in there. Got some lovage, a few uh, celery, um, celery leaves in there. Take my lid off the capoletti. So they're all nice and hot. And put a tiny bit of salt just on the top there, not too much. Then let's get my cigarettes and mushroom out. Let's put them out to the board just so they can cool down slightly so we can stand them up. There we go. And then let's build this dish. So start of off, starting off all your nice celery which has been braised those lovely butter beans. Then we're gonna spread it all in. And I'm just gonna rearrange so you've got all the garnish kind of sort of central, like so. Then let's take our capoletti, 
give them a little drain as you as you place them in, just so you don't get too much of uh, the butter. So that will of course make your consomme go cloudy. So we'll add these beautiful capillaries all the way around. We sent seven of these. You don't have to put them all on. Depends how hungry you are. So I'm just going to add five to mine. Then I'm going to take some of that consomme and I'm going to pour all of that around like so. I'm just going to finish off with a few little pieces of those lovely bits of celery, a few more beans, like so. There we go. Then lastly, just to add that real vibrant bit of colour going inside, just going to rearrange them slightly where they've fallen down. I'm going to add a little bit of lovage oil and you see how we just add those droplets around the stock, a little bit over the capoletti. That is all ready to go. Just leaving us to stand our lovely little mushroom cigarettes. And there we go. So a little bit different. Capoletti, oyster mushroom, you've got celery consomme and those crispy mushroom cigarettes to go with. On to desserts now. First one is a pistachio and lemon nougat glacé. So what we've got here is this parfait. So we've got a lemon parfait made of Amalfi lemons. And in there we've got these lovely chunks of nougat, uh, which has got cherries and pistachios put through it. So unwrap it from your little bit of um, paper first of all. I'm just going to trim, my, trim up the ends just slightly. And then really, really important that you let this come up to room temperature. So it will take about 15 minutes or so, come up to room temperature. And then I've got my uh, cherries here, I've got my cherry gel, and I've got my little meringues. So here we go, little pistachio uh, meringues, very, very delicate. I'm going to take a bit of my cherry gel, some black cherry gel here, and I'm just going to put a nice little bit of that just on the plate. I'll go for one more. There we go. Then we're going to take some of my cherries. I'm just going to arrange those like so. My little nougat glacé is just going to sit just at the side. More cherries on there. These have just been poached in a lovely bit of uh, sugar syrup just to soften them down slightly. A few more on there. And then nice and simple, all that's left is to get your meringues. With these, you've just got the opportunity just to see how to just stand them up, like so. And there we go. Nice and simple dessert, as it should be. A little pistachio and lemon, nougat glacé, poached cherries, cherry gel, and a nice little crispy uh, pistachio meringue. Second dessert for you this week here, lovely little vanilla creme brulee, nice and classic. What you want to do, get your brulee, dip it into the pan of water, watch your fingers. So dip it in, how it comes, give it a little drain. And then just push the edge of the brulee, just to ensure that it is loosened from the mould. And then turn it out onto your hand like so, and then a tray. And it's on the tray all ready to go. So let's take our little golden cast of sugar that we've uh, sent with. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that over. And then I'm going to, to the back of a spoon, just gonna make sure that sugar is nicely spread. Now, if you've got a blowtorch, you can absolutely use a blowtorch, but I'm gonna just glaze mine under a grill as I know everyone hasn't. Got the uh, got the blow torch at home, so a little bit more sugar, like so. There we go. All right, let's get under the grill. We're in, uh, make sure it's a nice hot grill as well, so sugar caramelises nice and quickly. And then we've got our bowl. We've got this lovely little uh, strawberry twill to go with it. We've got some strawberries. Let's get those out onto 
our board and we've got a chilled strawberry soup as well so let's keep that in the fridge until we're about to serve so I'm going to get my strawberries all ready to go and then let's give our brulee a little turn you can already start to see into Pepsi it's sitting caramelising now so keep an eye on it it will go quite quickly a little bit longer as I say, if you've got a blowtorch, just get the blowtorch nice and hot and then just use the end of the flame just to kind of lick the sort of the top of the brulee as it goes. So, we're almost there. It's just starting to colour now. And again, if you've got like the oven with the grill as part of it, make sure you've got the door open because you don't want to actually start baking the brulee as it were because then you're going to overcook it and it's going to scramble so get a nice even so you keep on turning it if you've got a few of them i suggest doing maybe one at one one at a time there we go almost there there we go so just bring our brulee over. Now watch the tray, of course, it's going to be very hot. And what we'll do is we'll get our little fish slice, we'll lift our brulee into the centre of the bowl, like so. Now I'm going to get my strawberries. I'm just going to place them just on the top. You see how delicate this is. Brulee's just supporting those. And we're gonna put our lovely little strawberry twill on the top. Look at this. Lovely. Get your strawberry soup. Pour that all the way around and you are good to go. Lovely creme brulee done for you by Ubi Chef at home. Lovely little English strawberries on the top, the crispy twill and the chilled soup. Lovely one, hope you enjoy it. Last course for you on the Newbie Chef menu this week. Usual is the uh, Newbie Chef cheese tasting. So take your cheese out, make sure they've warmed up for at least 15 minutes, ideally longer, before you present them. So just unwrap them and you'll see they're all in order in which to plate. So, first of all, we're going to go, that's the Quicks cloth bound little goat's cheese there. And we've got this is something called Letty Vaz, very similar to like a Comte. And this next one we've got the um, Libero. We'll get a Libero on there. Then we've got Rosso di Langia here. Lastly, Forma d'Ambert. You see that blue cheese perfectly sort of at temperature. You see it's lovely and soft. A little bit of quince paste to finish off with. Finally, our chutney, house chutney. Get a nice bit of that into my hot so you've got a combination you can eat a little bit of a quince a little bit of a chutney taste the cheese on their own and then we've got our black onion seed crackers here so i've got a little fork let's get those crackers just sort of sitting in there in the little rungs of the fork at the end i get lots of crackers on there like so and there you go best way to serve it of course with your Ubi Chef cheese tasting notes, so you can impress all your guests about how much you know about each of the cheeses on there. Hope you've enjoyed this week. We'll be back next week. Check the website, there's four weeks menus always ahead, so you can plan. Hope you enjoyed this week's menu. Hope you enjoy the meal tonight, and happy cooking.